well. The idea is to transmit you uh, how we develop in our clinic the refractive screening for dealing with uh, the decision making for cornea refractive surgery, also phagic lens and the press VOP intraocular lens, not only with clear lens exchange, but also about uh, cataract. This is our disclosure. It's important for you to know exactly what our relation with Oculus is overall a speaker bureau. And uh, well, uh, we really think, believe that uh, only with these uh, three, three equipment that uh, you have in the slide, the keratograph, the new Pentacan AXL wave and the Corby ST, we develop all the power diagnostic uh, in the anterior segment and uh, we need to achieve the gold, uh, gold standard of diagnosis in refractive surgery and also FACIC, intracular lens and pseudo -fakic, with all the variables involved in the decision criteria. I really think that the value of this uh, brand, or the value of uh, Oculus, is not only being in the cutting edge of the hardware, but for me the key is how they develop innovation, how they develop the software, how they develop the parameter in order to improve the diagnostic power that uh, concern to us to improve the value to our patient, how to improve the area under the curve of the diagnostic power, and how to how could improve the sensitivity and the specificity of every diagnostic uh, test. So coming from the beginning, we have developed from the 19th century, coming from Hemphold, uh, developing the keratometry, we have seen the evolution all the diagnosis in the cornea with all the things that we have developed in order to improve the power, the diagnostic power on, uh, on the cornea. And in the last century, in the new century, Oculus has been always there developing equipment in the cutting off in order to improve the, the diagnostic. But not, not only that, when they develop an innovation like the tomography, they found a reinvention of the old technology like the video keratocospy, and how could it be possible? Well, they, we are going to see how uh, the keratograph based on the keratograph, the, the topography uh, based in placido rings, how they achieve the highest level of diagnostic in dry eye testing and all the variables that we could improve in this uh, DC. Well, they, they, all of us know and they know what could be the limitation of the video keratocospy, the, the topography, the limited curve, corneal curvature, the unique information of the anterior surface in comparison with the tomography that we have the information of the posterior. And overall, the most important is the high influence of the TL film condition. So it was <laughs> really disruptive uh, think about the, how to convene a cons, a drawback into the strength of the diagnosis power to dry eye, and they develop with a keratograph all this incredible power to diagnostic the detention and the progression of the dry eye. We, as you know, have the keratograph uh, 5M for dry eye. And we can measure not only the breakup time, not invasive, it's very important in dry eye, but also the tear meniscus height. We also can uh, study the tear film in the lipid eye with interference of color and the S structure, and also not only in a static way, but also in the dynamic. And of course, in the dry eye, in the evaporative dry eye, to measure with uh, MABO scan, the mabography, and in the top and in the bottom of the eyelid. So we could also have an approach with a Genbis dry eye report, as you can see in the screen, not only the information of the TRBRAC uh, node in Basim, but also a complete assessment of the dry eye. DC, as you can see, has uh, at least uh, six parameters, as you can see in the evaluation, you can you have there the parameter, the tear meniscus height, the non-invasive break and time, the redness, also the dry eye, the OSTI, the occasional score, the megrography, the conjunctival fall, and the conjunctival canalysis. And in general, you can see how in the picture, according to the area of the GMB's uh, parameter, you can more or less 
uh, try to identify what could be not also not only the the diagnosis but also the prognosis and the evolution of the dry eye. With keratograph and also with the now with the new Pentacan AXL wave, we could have and we could measure a very important for almost everything in anterior semen that could be the measurement of the pupil at day in the photopic and at night in the mesopic. It's really important in all the procedure, in the therapeutic procedure, in corneal laser refractive surgery, in facic intracular lens, in order to see what could be uh, the adaptation of the optics of the lens and the pseudo facic to see the distribution according to the pupillometry, the dynamic pupillometry. We need to know that before the, the Pentagon IXL wave for us, keratograph was the gold standard, the first equipment in order to assess the day and night pupil diameter and give us that information of the uh, dynamic uh, pupillometry. You need to know that the light condition to measure the keratograph was around 500 lux. So this condition is more or less the outdoor condition of light with Pentagon wave we are going to have more or less 300 looks. It could be the condition indoor. So we are going to have a little difference. And we also need to know that the measurement of the day pupil of keratograph is at distance. As you can see in the left hand, we have some paper that tell us that when we compare the pupil at night, at distance in between and the top at three meter, and difference uh, at near, we could have a little difference around 0.5 millimeters. It's good to know this uh, difference. The mesopic condition, when we compare uh, both uh, technology, the keratograph with the pentagon wave, in mesopic condition are quite uh, equivalent. Only at night, at, at, excuse me, at day, the pupil diameter are 0.3 millimeter larger with pentagon because of the look, looks or the different, the little difference of Pentacan. As I told you, Pentacan reproduced incredibly the indoor condition. The keratograph reproduced the outdoor condition. It's good to know if you want to compare. And the day for topic, the pupil diameter measure with Colbar is a little larger than Pentacan. So probably Colbar is not adapted to the real condition of the patient, as I told you. It's interesting to know that even keratograph could give us some ideas about the corneal health with the topography, not as deep, of course, than pentagram, but it would be interesting in some cases. Well, as a screening in some cases in very advanced keratoconus detection, but it would be very interesting, for example, to the calculation. If you are calculating the ACL with the OCOS formula, this the, 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 the company formula, is better in terms of the keratograph, even the pentagon, that the uh, first equipment measure with OSCAM. When we go directly to pentagon IX wave, uh, Professor Alfari is going to tell us more in deep, but is for us the gold standard of the anterior segment if you are going to make a laser refractive surgery, facic intracular lens, or pseudo facic intracular lens, is the, the more powerful. Uh, diagnosis that we have uh, right now. Look at this evolution. The evolution is not only about the hardware, it's also about the software creating an incredible power uh, diagnostic equipment coming from the HR, the Pentagon, coming from the 2002 till 20 years after, more than 20 years after, we have road, we have continued this road creating First of all, it was the first te chain fluke technology coming to help us and tell, tell us uh, all the information in the, about the posterior cornea. Also, we improve the optical biometry. We base of all our calculation of intracular lens on Pentacan, which is the only biometer that uh, we use, achieving incredible outcomes like the gold standard in Lecce 2. We are going to talk about that. Also, the total uh, way from the objective refraction, and right now with the retroillumination is an incredible skill to the follow-up of the centration of the uh, premium lenses and also the toric lenses that we are going to see. Well, in the first uh, screen, you could have this fast uh, view of the patient. It's like a screening. We could see at the top, at the right top, 
The objective refraction and also the total averometry in day and in night condition. As you know, the photic and mesopic condition, you could add up uh, to that condition of the patient to know exactly if we could have some variation in all the day of this condition. We also have a screening of ectasia, only to take a look if we could go, we need to go deeper to this uh, information of the pentacan. Also, all the biometric variables, for example, the power calculation, the axis, the toricity, the anterior and the posterior information of the cornea to take more or less the idea of this field of uh, the uh, pseudophagic lens. And in the middle, you could uh, customize all the overview maps, the index, and the explanation for the patient that what could be the his properties of all the cornea, all the optics, and the influence in the quality of vision to show exactly them, not only them, but also the relatives, uh, what could be the affection and what could be the solution in the terms of quality of vision. For me, the key of working with Oculus is this possibility. It's not only about hardware, as I told you. We are going to have all the index based evidence. They develop incredible group of people like uh, Professor Alpha, like uh, Ambrosio, Bellin, Vinci Guerra, incredible people working all together to improve the value of all the index and also creating a, a virtuous circle of innovation, fit the innovation of the equipment and the brand. And the key is that how to improve the power of diagnosis. It tried to develop an index that separate adequately the normal distribution in red, the DC, to the normal people in green. So the most separate are the distribution, the better is going to be the index. And not only one index, in, but the combination on different index in order to improve the power, the sensitivity and the specificity. So we can go more deep, as you know, all of you know that the Belling Ambrosio uh, display was the big step forward in order to improve the knowledge of the progression control of the cornea estasia, <laughs> not only the detection, but also the progression that we have now. Right now, we have an incredible tools. For example, we could separate the reduction of vision in problem of cornea to separate if it's because of the high order aberration, or is it because of the opacity? Before we only could have an idea with the adaptation of a rigid contact lens, like a sclera contact lens, but you could have more or less the idea and separate what could be the problem in the cornea. Is because of the opacity, as you can see here, problem of cornea transparency, or is about the high order aberration, the approach to the therapeutic uh, approach to these people could be absolutely different in between one or another. So it's very interesting to know, for example, to compare the transparency with the Cernike polynomial and each uh, order of the Cernike polynomial in order to see what could be the affectation or the recovery of the vision of our patient. And also go to this Cernike uh, polynomial in order to see in what amount the value of the patient is around the distribution of the normal uh, population. For example, we could also uh, see the corneal power distribution in the pupil, the, the night pupil and the day pupil of the patient in order to see if the distribution is very concentrated, it's a good news, or very big uh, the distribution that probably could be a contraindication for the implantation of uh, press VOP lenses. And for me, this is very important right now. Overall, with lenses that we are working, inducing a spherical aberration. As you know, uh, uh, intracular lens that play with a spherical aberration is very effective, more than diffractive, very effective to this decentration of the lens. So having the opportunity of mask and seeing with retroillumination if the lens is decentrated in comparison with the normal vertex that you know is the first uh, Purkinje reflex and would be the line of sight. So this is very important to see the decentration if the decentration is affecting the quality of vision of the patient and also the rotation of the toric lens is an incredible skill 
to identify if the loss of vision of our patient is because of this uh, possible uh, situation. Talking about the power of calculation, there is a myth over all of us that we need a very expensive uh, hardware in order to improve the, uh, the calculation, the accuracy of our patient. And according to the literature, according to the evidence, it's not as important. Right now, with the new formula uh, from Hague's formula, with Virgin formula, that we have more than three values to identify the ELP of the lens, almost all the formula works quite similar in normal eyes. What could be the problem in order to improve our um, value, our rate of patient around 0.5 dioptry? Two situations that the Pentagon help us to improve. On the top is the value of the uh, reporting of the data, the collection of the data. Uh, at the top, you could have information about how accuracy have each data and the red line and yellow line appears if the data are not valuable enough. And in the top and in the bottom, you have how to automatize constant feed. It's very important to customize the A constant for each equipment, for each lens, and probably for each surgery. In the middle, you're going to have all the formula, very, uh, the most valuable formula, as uh, we said, is uh, above uh, Hagee's in the last formula, it's more or less uh, the same achievement. We don't have clinical differences, probably in some paper, some statistics, but not clinical differences. So one step forward, we have the connection of Pentacan AXL wave also with Corvis. It's important, this uh, in connect, as you, he's passing, <laughs> okay. Uh, this connection is going to help us in order to improve the power of diagnosis in, uh, in refractive surgery and cornea. As you know, the Corvis uh, is going to study the biomechanical properties with uh, air proof. We are going to have, as you saw, an inward deformation, an outward deformation with different parameters, as you see, the planation, the highest concavity, and also the second planation. And according to that, we again, our Oculus develop incredible group coming from the first beginning, 2016, different uh, author, <laughs> incredible, as you can see, Vinci Guerra, Robert, uh, Cynthia Robert, Ambrosio, well, people absolutely talented in order to discover what parameter could improve more and more the diagnostic powerful in our patient for each situation and in what clinical application we could have. For example, for the safety in the preoperative, if you want to operate of laser correction to our uh, patient, try to reduce almost to zero the possibility of jatrogenic ecstasia. Very important situation. How, and when you read some paper about consensus, one of the biggest problems is how to define the progression of the keratoconus, because based on that, we are going to take the decision of implanting rings, of creating uh, overall uh, cross-linking, and it's very important to know exactly what could be the best way of uh, seeing the progression and don't confuse with the um, um, low uh, reproductibility of the equipment. We also could have information about what something very important is the, the follow-up of our patient operating of laser and PRK and see if we are going to have a progression before uh, a ectasia could be created. Also, when we apply the cross-linking, we are going to have the evaluation of the stiffness of the cornea. Um, of course, the assessment of the glaucoma beyond the conventional intracular pressure. We are seeing very interesting paper right now based on Corvis that even some glaucoma drops not reduce the intracular pressure but induce Im improvement of the stiffness, not reducing the intracular pressure. This is very important for our patient. So talking, for example, about the safety in the preoperative cornea laser vision correction screening, we also have parameter to differentiate that. You can see here the connection in between at the left, the CBA. It would be the index in different, based in different parameters. 
uh, of biomechanical the connection with the Bellingham browser display, creating the TBA uh, parameter that is going to give us give us the most power information about uh, the screening of this patient. For me, this is absolutely the challenge that we have in front of us with the keratoconus. It try to achieve a real diagnosis about the frustrus keratoconus. In literature, not subclinical, but also frustrus keratoconus. In literature, the, define, the definition about frustrus keratoconus was, as you can see here, VNT. It's the normal topography in one eye with a very asymmetric stasia in the other eye. So with the new version two of the TBA, we in, and with a cutoff of 0 0.5, we achieve an incredible uh, area under the curve diagnosis of 0 0.945 with a sensitivity of 84% and a specificity of 19%, try to confirm as much as possible the possibility of this uh, situation. In the preoperative, we are going to have this uh, parameter in order to see how uh, out of the normal is the index and also to understand uh, what could be in the postoperative, the follow-up to reconnection, the operate cornea, and also know if this parameter is affecting in the follow-up and the reduction of the peers between the preoperative but postoperative stage. And it's very interesting also you are going to have the new classification A, B, C, D, E, in order to know in a better way the progression of the biomechanical situation of keratoconus and also measure the stiffness of the first applanation for the prognostic of the after the treatment of cross-linking is not only in a higher SPA1 uh, that give us the stiffness of the cornea, the first applanation, but right now with the SSI that means the stiffness of the cornea along all the stress range of the air proof of the cornea. But also it's very interesting, very useful. For example, you can show the, the patient and tell them what could be the repercussion, clinical repercussion of each index uh, when you are talking about the chair decision making with them. And finally, talking about glaucoma, we are going to have an incredible and powerful uh, skill in order to differentiate if the patient is going to be, the intracular pressure measurement is going to be affected or no with a laser refractive surgery and also knowing what could happen in the all normal tension glaucoma that probably is going, uh, is affecting because a problem is the biomechanical properties of the cornea. So in conclusion, with Oculus, with the three equipment that uh, they propose us, the Keratograph, Pentagon, AKS, AKS, AXL, and Wave, and Corbis, we are going to have the highest level of evidence-based technology in refractive surgery screening for the decision-making of our patient in corner refractive surgery, in fact, in intracular lens and press in intracular lens. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, th <clears throat> thank you very much for this uh, very comprehensive uh, lecture and, and covering almost everything uh, uh, with it. And we can also see that you can measure more or less everything. Are, are there specific uh, effects, let's say, where you prefer or where you trust the Pentacom IXL wave, for example, in keratoconus evaluation or follow-up more than the Corvus? Or is there something that works together uh, so that the one thing and the other thing have different value of information. Can you maybe say a little bit on that? Uh, I really think that uh, the mix of the information, uh, mixing the tomographic information without developed parameter with the biomechanics is absolutely amazing for, for all, the, all the situation that we have in front of us with keratoconus. The early diagnosis, even before that the tomographic problem, uh, the evaluation of each uh, possible treatment and also the follow-up. So for me, the key of this, the brand, that, uh, that the value that this brand, the Oculus, have is having the innovation virtuous circulants in the ADN. So they give us a solution even before we make the question. So for us, it's yeah. absolutely incredible in that way. In other cases, we have 
some interesting how was some interesting images that show you see and you see wow what pretty images but in what sense it's going to help us to improve the value to our patient this is the question that we always need to do before to buy any equipment don't you think that with the corvus for example uh, we kind of learn to use the Pentacom XL wave even more because we detected things that we haven't detected first with the, the Pentacom, and then we kind of reproduce uh, and understand why we have these findings. I'm talking about subclinical and uh, uh, form plus keratoconus, which are sometimes very, very difficult to diagnose. And I think we're getting at the point where we can diagnose these conditions already way before uh, it has any impact. I think the Corvus has kind of moved up also the performance of the Absolutely. Absolutely agree. Uh, for me, it's very funny how how all the relationship with the diagnosis of the biomechanical properties is uh, pushing some super speciality like, mm. glau like glaucoma colleagues yeah. to go through this uh, field instead of only we know that the intracular pressure, the stiffness of the cornea, and the thickness of the cornea are the three values that we need to know to measure the intracular pressure. They were focusing only in the thickness of the cornea. Mm. But after having the core weight, uh, they are pushing to this area. They yeah. are discovering incredible things. For example, some uh, treatment that improves the stiffness in, instead of in, reduce the intracular pressure. So uh, the, uh, having the opportunity of, have, of measure the biomechanical probability is improving, not only the arterial segment diagnosis, mm. but another collateral uh, so that is going to give the value, uh, incredible value to our face. Great.